virtually impossible to know how much heat an object contains, but when heat moves, we can figure out how much heat moved and in which direction. Calorimetry is the precise measurement of heat flow into or out of a system for chemical and physical processes. To do calorimetry, we need a piece of equipment called a calorimeter. This is a calorimeter. It can be made of really expensive materials and be incredibly efficient at insulation. Or it can be a styrofoam cup and do a darn good job of insulation as well. All you need to do this at home is two stacked styrofoam cups, a thermometer, a lid, a stirrer, and a known volume of water. Let's say you have all of this ready to go and you've read the initial temperature of water. Then you'll take a hot piece of copper, maybe let's say at 90 degrees, and drop it into the calorimeter. As you stir, you'll see the temperature rise. Eventually it will stop rising when it's at equilibrium, meaning the water and the copper metal are at the same temperature. The heat given off by the metal is absorbed by the surroundings, which include the water, stirrer, cup, and even the thermometer itself. The majority of the heat will be transferred to the water, and for the sake of simplicity, we'll do calculations assuming that all of the heat is actually transferred to the water. We'll try a calculation to figure out the heat transfer at the end of this video. Often you'll come across the word enthalpy instead of the word heat. If pressure is constant, we can use change in enthalpy essentially interchangeably with the word heat. Enthalpy truly accounts for all total heat in the system, but if you measure the change in the enthalpy, it's the same as the heat transfer. The amount of heat lost or gained by the system will be equal to the amount of heat gained or lost by the surroundings. So the equation for delta H is this. Heat of the system is equal to the negative heat of the surroundings, which is negative mass times specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. If delta H is negative, it's exothermic. If it's positive, it's endothermic, just like heat, Q of the system. Remember, delta means change, so when we find the change in temperature, always calculate it by taking the final temperature minus the initial temperature. In a thermochemical reaction, you can show heat as a product or as a reactant. If the product is heat, then it's an exothermic reaction. Heat is being released. If the reactant is heat, then it's endothermic and heat is being absorbed. The heat of a reaction is the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction. It's important to show the state of matter for each reactant and product when showing the heat of reaction, which in this case is 65.2 kilojoules. The state of matter is important because it can actually make a difference in the reaction. Here's the decomposition of water, starting with liquid water, and again, starting with water vapor. The resulting enthalpies have a difference of 44 kilojoules of energy. This is why the state of matter needs to be explicitly marked in the chemical reaction. There is a difference. You will also see enthalpy as heat of combustion, which is the heat of reaction for the complete burning of one mole of a substance. The heat of combustion will always be a negative number because combustion is an exothermic process, so heat is always released. Now let's try a sample calorimetry calculation. An unknown piece of metal weighing 50 grams at 90 degrees Celsius is dropped into a calorimeter that contains 200 grams of 25 degree water. The final temperature of the water is 28.3 degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat capacity of the metal? First, we'll calculate the amount of heat absorbed by the water because we have all the information we need. 200 grams times the specific heat of water, which we can just look up, times the final minus initial temp, our units of grams and Celsius will cancel, and we get 2,760 joules. Because the water could only absorb heat that was released by the metal, we can assume the same amount of heat was released as was absorbed. So now we can solve for the specific heat capacity of the unknown metal. So here's our equation. But we actually want to solve for specific heat capacity. To isolate it, we'll need to divide both sides by m and delta t. This makes the mass and delta t on the right side of the equation equal to 1, and we'll get it cleaned up and have this nice equation. Now we can plug in the data and calculate, and we'll get 0.9 joules per gram degree Celsius, which is the specific heat capacity of aluminum. Amazing. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.